Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And when we talk about impact, today's guest is going to impact you like none other. My friends, you've heard the name Jameis Winston before, and uh, Jameis is the new quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Kind of odd to say that when I say the New Orleans Saints new quarterback, because for the last 20 years, uh, Drew Brees has been in the NFL, and uh, for the last umpteen years, he's been with the New Orleans Saints. Well, Jameis Winston is going into his seventh year in the NFL. He's been with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and now uh, with the Saints, he had one year under the tutelage of of Drew and uh, Jameis Winston, if you do not know, was a Heisman Trophy winner. He was the first overall pick in the NFL draft seven years ago. Folks, this is one heck of an interview because of the person being interviewed. Not sorry, my questions, but because of the answers. Let me tell you what, you ever you ever have an idea of what you think a person is like? And they're they're even they far exceed what you even think of because I had never met Jameis before this week. He called me up and said, "Hey, TD, I want to come out there and train. I've I've heard about you through Gerald McCoy and then Drew. And uh, let me tell you what, with our conversations, with the text messages, and then with the training, I believe that the way someone trains, you can tell a lot about person uh, a person by the way they train." And in this past week alone, and having the opportunity to work with Jameis, um, he is one, one heck of a impressive young man. Some of the things that Jameis is going to touch upon today that I really want you to listen to. And please, if you're not working out right now, you might want to lace up your boots and get out and start hitting the streets. Because this one's going to percolate your blood pressure a little bit, get your heart rate going, and you're going to be wanting to attack the day without a doubt. Jameis talks about embracing the struggle and through some of the struggles of life, how that actually has been part of the process to make him the man that he is today. We talk about his his fame, uh, his famous favorite quote and verse of the Bible, uh, which of course, y'all know mine, Proverbs 27, 17, y'all know that. Sharpen, the, sharpen that iron up, right? But what I love is when Jameis talks about his personal life. Jameis grew up in a four-bedroom house with 20 people. Folks, 20 people. Sometimes we think we got it bad or money's tight or whatever it may be, but he talks about the love within in that household, although the, it wasn't very big, 20 people. He talks about his grandmother and what an impact that she made and, and, and how he had to you know be a servant leader, be a servant leader, even though he was uh, just one of the 20 in the house which brought him to who he is today because one of the things that Jameis talks about is the process. Now, you've heard me talk about a thousand times about the process, but here's a veteran seven years playing at a high level, uh, embracing the the process. And I love when when Jameis talks about you got to be able to push and you got to pray. You got to push and you got to pray. You got to learn when to push it and really challenge yourself to be the best. And prayer, the importance of slowing down and listening and tapping into the adversities that you may have been faced with, but you're tapping into what God's whispers are for you because all of us are faced with adversity. And Jameis is no different. And he talks about that today in the episode. Folks, you're going to really love this. You're going to hear an energy from a young man, just 27 years old. He just had his second child, and he talks about even some of that today. Uh, without further ado, let's go out to today's interview with Jameis Winston, the new quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. We are back with another episode of the Todd Erkin Impact Show. And today I have a very special guest in the house. His name is Jameis Winston. You're like, I know that name. I know that. How do I know that name? You're going to hear all about Jameis Winston today. And Jameis, welcome to the show. Grateful and blessed to be here, brother. Man, it's great to have you in San Diego. Uh, what brought you to San Diego? I want to get into everything, but what brought you to San Diego? You're here for a, at least a week. What brought you out here? You, man. <laughs> you brought me out to San Diego. I wanted to learn uh, from you. Mm. You are one of the best trainers in the world. Uh, you work with someone that I admire my entire life and Drew Brees. Uh, so I just wanted to be a part of that process and just add that to my arsenal uh, to be able to compete better and to be able to, to be a better quarterback. So, folks, we're out here training, and uh, Jameis is like, hey, I heard about your podcast. I'm like, well, Jameis, we got to hop on the podcast. He's like, absolutely, because we're touching a lot of people. Um, 
we talk about training. Jameis has immersed himself like week one, we are training and you're getting after it from 7 a.m. to like 8 p.m. You're doing <laughs> something uh, between mindset, coaching, throwing, lifting, Pilates, body work. Um, and and you, you talk about a world-class routine. Mm -hmm. Before I go into the football, Tell me about some exciting things that have happened in your life in the last few months. Well, man, December 31st, I had my second child. New Year's Eve. <laughs> New Year's Eve. Yeah, so great for a tax write-off. But, <laughs> uh, but it was a, it was very humbling, uh, mm -hmm. that moment, because uh, my wife, she had ended up getting COVID the last few weeks of the year, uh, the second week of December. So it was oh. we were in football season. We had Kansas City. I got the call that she had COVID on that Friday. So I had to sit out for five days. I missed the Kansas City Chiefs game. She's eight months pregnant. Oh. She's due like so she was due on, on New Year's Eve, right? So she's like panicking. Turns out my two year old, he ends up getting COVID. So whole Christmas break. My birthday is January sixth. No family. So it was just, it was very humbling. The only time I got to see my wife, the first time I saw my wife when she was in the delivery room. What? The good news is the doctor said that our baby was immune, immune from COVID <laughs> because she had, she had it while, you know, she so was with him. Was she symptomatic or your two-year-old symptomatic with COVID? Or? So my, my wife and two-year-old had COVID. Yeah. But my, my baby, the doctor said he's immune to COVID. Right. So she was in her 14 days. Did she get days. sick? Like she, really? Sick? So she lost taste and smell. My Got son, it. my Got son, uh, Lord willing, like he he was he was fine. He still was yeah. bouncing off walls. The only thing was I couldn't be with him, like FaceTiming him, reading books with him. Like it was just, you know, when you're in the football, when you're in the season, yep. it's so like it's it's small times that you gotta get a chance to spend time with mm. your family. Amen. Mondays, Amen. Amen. Tuesdays, Fridays, when you and Saturdays, when you have those days, like you really cherish those days because during the week you're working, 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 working. And to be able to like really, I'm away from my family for three weeks, four weeks. Yeah. That's the most challenging part. In the off season, like you're like, okay, when do I get a break from you guys? Do you feel that having now a second baby gives you more purpose of even why you're out here, why you're training at even another level? Like from a purpose perspective, mm -hmm. has your second child even given you more depth? Do you believe? Well, my, my first, my first child, like. Instantly, when he came into this world, I knew then and there, like, it's way bigger than me. Yeah. And me and my wife, we came to understand and we agreed, like, hey, we have to start putting our family and our faith first. Like, that's it, because now we got somebody that we're account accountable for for the rest of our lives. When my second child came, it was amazing for my wife because we went through so much adversity with the COVID. Yes. And it's just like we had our miracle baby at the end of one of the the historically during our life a very uh troubling year for everyone yeah. so uh he was he was just a he was a happy point at the end of the year so that was a blessing for us mm. wow well congratulations on that thank that you. is awesome thank you you told me when we sat down on day one that you're willing to do whatever it takes to be great what do you think it takes to be great i, I think the biggest thing is developing a process like i'm, I'm all in of knowing that it's not gonna take one day to, to get where I wanna get, mm. but I'm gonna commit myself to whatever I need to do day by day, minute by minute, to ultimately get there. And if I don't get there, I'm gonna continue to strive and strive and strive until eventually I can't do it anymore. Right. So I'm I'm all in to the to the point of like Todd, like success doesn't define who Jameis Winston mm -hmm. is, right? The work ethic. The, the process, uh, the resilience, the perseverance is ultimately going to define who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, you always hear me folks say the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And the one thing I could tell you in just this week alone that I've seen Jameis do is the way you do one thing is the way you do everything because I'm talking about everything from you, your head's on a swivel all the time. You know what's going on. You know who's in the room. You're cleaning up after yourself with the BOSUs and the kettlebells. And I'm like, Jameis, just do your thing. And you're, you, you, you have a very, very acute uh, awareness of what's going on all the time and I'm sure that's a gift that you've had but uh, I recognize that immediately that 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 eyesight that vision of what you have and when you talk about greatness um, we talked about this years ago you competed against Drew Brees, Brees for five years yes you're, you're with the Tempe Bucks you're competing against Drew he's your nemesis and then you join him mm -hmm. and you had a year to study with him 
What, what are the greatest lessons you learned from having Drew as a mentor? Mm. The biggest thing is just servitude and consistency. Mm. He was able to serve all his teammates, no matter if they were a defensive lineman, if we were in the quarterback room, or even someone in the cafeteria. Mm. He was willing to serve, and his consistency was zero. Like, no one else competes with him. He was in the same place every single day at the exact same time. Mm. Like, it was – when I came to the Saints, I was looking for something that was just going to blow me off of my feet – and that is what blew me off my feet. What time was that typically at? Typically at uh, about 6.30, 6.30 mm-hmm. to 7 every single day. And, like, he's a great father. Like, he's not just somebody that's going to be like, okay, it's, it's football, I'm zoned in. Right. Like, he's spending time with the boys. Like, I'm going to the boys' uh, football games. Like, he has a yeah. whole flag football league <laughs> and still playing – NFL quarterback at a high level. So he's like running a business, his own football league. <laughs> like the whole city of New Orleans is a part of this league and he's coming back and he's leading 53 men and really a whole building of people mm. to Super Bowls. Mm. So that is what inspired me. That's what showed me that it's different than just playing a game. Mm. It's a CEO mentality. Like Drew Brees is a CEO. And I knew for me to be the player that I need to be, I had to be become a CEO. Mm. Yeah, I think sometimes people forget that even Drew had adversity early in his career, Mm -hmm. right? Like between him getting benched when he was with the Chargers early on, he had a shoulder injury. I think all of those things strengthened him as an athlete and make made him who he was throughout, especially the tail end, the last 10 years of his career. As you're going into year seven, uh, what he just, as he retired, was in year 20 uh, of that. Can you imagine going another 13 years in the league? Lord willing. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Lord willing. And, and one thing about Drew, like, I understand he's a, a great example of success is in a struggle. Yeah. Like, no matter what is in front of you, no matter what you're faced with, you got to understand that you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. And even last year, he battled so many different things that no one knew about. Right. And right. He, he, didn't, he didn't care. Yeah. Like, he just came to work. That's to right. be who who he was, like he the team, like the teammates didn't have to know. Like we knew because we were around him every single day. Mm. We saw the pain, we saw the the anguish, but we also saw the perseverance. When it was time for game day, all that stuff don't matter. Yeah. He's going out there. To well, when I asked him about you, one of the things I I felt from him was that he loved that you were always asking him questions because mm-hmm. for what five six years five years you were you didn't have that mentor you were mm-hmm. the guy in tampa bay didn't have a a senior vet to learn from and next thing drew is like loved the fact that you want to be in the film room studying film and mm-hmm. learning these things because he took on a different role i believe in the last few years of his career as a quarterback mm-hmm. in, as a mentor mm-hmm. in all aspects of life james you, you we've talked about this you know i'm a, a get your mind right guy yes what does get your mind right mean to you how uh, do you get your mind right you, it, it starts with as soon as you wake up, thanking the good Lord, like, Lord, thank you for giving me another opportunity to live this day. Mm. So it starts with that. Secondly, I believe it's in the process, man. Yeah. Like, every day is, is a different day. Every day is a new opportunity. You you can be in a routine, but it's, it's different. Yep. It's a different date. It's a different time. Yep. So I, I believe getting your mind right is consistently believing and committing to the process that you're on. And this, your process is not... Drew, like Jameis right. Winston can't do Drew Brees' process. That's Jameis exactly Winston can't right. do TD's process. Yep. I have to do my individual process. What does that morning routine look like for you? When you talk about getting up, praying, what does your your early morning routine look like? My early morning routine, I, I get in the Word. I'm, I'm reading a psalm a day. I'm reading a, a proverb a day. Uh, I'm reading a book in the New Testament or the Old Testament. And then I go and listen to a Tony Evans podcast. I love uh, his his uh, church. Yep. Uh, it's Urban Alternative okay. uh, is his foundation. And then I stretch. I stretch to get my body right. How long do you stretch for? I stretch about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, it's something new. While listening to Tony? Yes. It's like a sun salutation. Uh, just get my body moving. I, I picked up this like three years ago. I like that. And uh, it's been pretty, Stretch pretty good for spirit. me. Stretching spirit right there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a form of meditation. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I, after I'm done stretching, I just lay there for 10 minutes. I turn on the app of Headspace uh, because I think you need that alone time. You need that time with yourself. Like, And I think you can really feel uh, the presence of the Lord when you're just in a quiet place. Like, Think about it. It's noise everywhere we go. It's so rare that we get a chance to just sit in peace and just hear nothing. Mm. So I talk about all the time is eliminate the noise, focus on the signal. What's the signal? What's God whispering to you? Um, 
what what are the whispers you hear? The only way to, to, to tap into the whispers is silence. And silence out of all the exercise that we do in the weight room, you do with, with you know, in your routine is silence. It's the hardest exercise you'll do is sit in meditation and listen to what God is having to say. And it's great to hear you say that that's one of the fun, you know, foundational, fundamental disciplines that you do on a regular basis. James, talk about um, as you've ascended through the NFL, again, going into year seven, you've tasted the highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. What? First overall pick way back in the day, a Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, you've learned a lot in your, you're only 27 years old, right? People, you're 27. What are some of the lessons you've, you've, you would say you could share with our friends today? Tasting the top and also tasting adversity. What would be a two or three lessons that you've learned about life that you could share? Uh, I can I can sum it up with something that Drew taught me really last year. Uh, I always have been a result driven person. Mm -hmm. Like I'm judging my day based on the results. Like what did I produce mm. this day? But when I served Drew, learned from him, he said, "James, you gotta you gotta live your life on the decisions. Sometimes the result is not really what you what you want all mm. the time. Like sometimes mm. you're not gonna throw a touchdown." But it, sometimes you have to throw the ball away and you don't like the result, but it's a great decision. Yep. So one thing I learned through my career is like the decisions add up over time. That's right. Like you can't be looking to go win a Super Bowl every single play, even though mentally that's where you're at. Yep. Mentally, you know where you want to go to. You're visualize, visualizing where you want to go to. Mm -hmm. But it's that small decision. It's that, de it's that decision to spend 15 to 30 minutes in the Word. It's that decision every single day to wake up and just move around a little bit. It's that decision every day when you don't really want to come in and work out, but you know oh, that's yeah. going to make you better. So I understood like you have to commit to that every single day. Even non-athletes. Even not like anyone. So what would you say to a non-athlete that would say, oh yeah, but Jameis, you're getting paid big money to work out. What right. would you say to that person that isn't getting paid but needs to work out? I, I don't do this for money. Like I, I, I do this because I love what I do. That's right. Uh, I got a chance to, to speak with uh, Ms., Ms. Julia and she told me that she loves what she what she does yeah. and i was like that resonated with me because when you're chasing after your passion right and everyone has a passion That's everyone right. has a dream when you're doing something that you love to do you do it with ease mm. right when you're forcing yourself to do something is you can you can end up falling yeah. off track you can you can end up falling but james is he's preaching now he's talking about when he said miss julie the one who hijacked my show uh just recently julie wilcox and took over the julie wilcox show uh on that been with me for 16 years it doesn't matter if you're an athlete or a non-athlete you're a fitness enthusiast you're a weekend warrior you're you're in the trenches you're on wall street because i hear all the time oh yeah but they're athletes that get paid guys out of all the athletes i work with they're like oh, okay i'm getting paid x amount of dollars so i'll go work out it's the same struggles they go through mm -hmm. as everyone else goes through you got to get your mind right mm -hmm. to show up every day especially if the sun's not up and you got to get out it's cold out you got to put your hoodie on you got to put your hat on you got to you know you got to start to eat right dial in your habits your disciplines to do those things it's like finding the drive to say i'm going to do this listen to a great podcast um get your mind right listen to some music that's going to to lift you up speak right now to a high school athlete First and foremost, to the ones who may be gifted and highly touted, you were a two-sport standout, had tons of opportunities. Mm -hmm. What would be something that you would share with them yeah. at the high school level that they've got scholarship offers, they've got life is, is grand? What would you say to that, that young boy or girl today? The biggest thing that I, I say to any young, young athlete, you have to be willing to serve. Mm. When you're able to, to humble yourself, put your pride and ego to the side yep. and serve someone, you learn so much more. Mm. And nowadays in this generation, our kids aren't, they're not born, like they're not being out there to serve. I grew up in a house with 20 cousins. My mom is the youngest of 11. I grew up in a house from ages from my grandma was 75. I had uncles 50. I had my, my mom was the youngest of 11 and her sister, the second youngest, was 12 years older than her. So she was really the baby. I had cousins that were older than my mom. My mom had nieces and nephews that are older than her. So growing up in a house like that with obviously it was a lot of things that How I many grew people up, are in the house? 20 people. 20 cousins in a house. 20 cousins. Like my grandma had children. Jeez. Uh, nieces and nephews, grandchildren, and great grands. Where was it? In the Where same house, Bessemer, Alabama. Okay. 
in, in a four bedroom, one bathroom house. I'm talking about having to boil water on the stove because you're taking a uh, baths with your cousin, boil dirty water on the stove and pour it in the tub so you can get some hot water. Mm. Like I'm talking about that type of servitude. Like you don't, you don't, when you grow up like that and you having to serve an age group from 50 down to your, your, your baby, your baby cousins who has to get a bottle who can only eat rice. Like you feed, you feed the baby rice so they can f- fill up their stomach. You putting rice in a, in a bottle, right? Because you know, their mom isn't producing enough breast milk yep. because she's, uh, doing something else, wow. right? So you learn how to serve, and I don't think today's generation they they don't see a lot of people serving. A lot of people see individualism. So I would just tell those young young athletes and really anyone be willing to serve. It, yeah. It'll make your life better. I still can't think of your your mom, the youngest of eleven yes. kids. I'm the youngest of eight, wow. so I already like your mom, <laughs> the youngest of eleven. And where do you fit into your? Do you have siblings? I have a younger sister, 24, yep. Yep. and I have a younger brother, 13. How much of your story do you believe makes you who you are today? With uh, Growing up with 20 kids in a house, you having to serve, how much of that makes you who you are today? The, the whole part, because it's my story. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes we miss the picture about our own individual story. We're, we're writing it, mm. right? Like, honestly, the, the Bible says a, a man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his path, mm-hmm. right? So we're planning our ways, but eventually he already has a plan for us. Yep. So whatever is predicated towards us, it's going to be ours r- regardless. Mm. So adversity is coming regardless. Mm. Triumph is eventually coming. We just have to be willing to understand, like, this is our story, and we got to be in it. Mm. We got to believe in ourselves because we're the only one that's going to have the opportunity to live our life. Yeah. No one else can. And, and you, you've already heard me say, and just this week alone, live a life worth telling a story about what's your story. Uh, Jameis, you have an amazing story already. You're, you're impacting millions of people. But I know there's someone listening in today who is not a star athlete. Mm. It might be a boy or girl in high school whose COVID has has crushed their dreams. They didn't get an opportunity or they're down and out or they got injured in their season, whatever their sport may be. If that young boy or girl today is listening in, what would be something you would say to them to give them hope that there's a brighter tomorrow than there is today? Uh, I have to go back to successes in the struggle. Mm. Like you will find so much uh, love, faith, grace in the struggle mm. because I, I don't believe in losing you're learning mm. right you're winning and you're learning so if you're down if you uh, are feeling depressed just keep pushing it's eventually going like that's why the good lord created balance you're gonna have some bad days but the good will outweigh the bad so go there go there embrace the struggle because there's a lot of people struggling how do you embrace the struggle you talk about you're in it now mm-hmm. you're battling how do you get through it? What do you do? Push. Push. You pray. Pray. And that and that's and that's all you can do. It's because ultimately, like again, it's your story. How about the people around you. Mm. How important is that? It's very, very important. Because you are ultimately gonna be a product of what you're around. So and I and I'm a product of that because I have friends that when I got first got to lead when I was in college, that they're still my friends to the to, right. to this day. Yep. But I know that if I'm around them for 10 hours of the day, they're not going to make me yeah. become the best. They're not going to allow me to become the best quarterback that I possibly can be. I'm still going to talk on the phone with them, but I can't be around them. Right. Because some people energy doesn't necessarily match your energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. It's just you have to be able to be around someone like yourself, like my trainer Otis, like my agent, that is always proactively, not reactive, but proactively pushing you to be the best. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I was going to ask you about Otis because on your wrist you have a verse, Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Yes, yes. iron They're, sharpens iron. Right, exactly right. Iron sharpens iron. And I've seen you in a few days, some of the iron around you, and I know Otis has been with you, your trainer, for since you've been 13? 13 years old. 13 years old. You talk about, I always talk about your circle of genius or, you know, it's my favorite verse as well, twenty seven seventeen Proverbs, uh, iron sharpens iron, is talk about that. Um, how important is it now and has it been to surround yourself with the right people? Mm. Well, see, when you talk about that specific verse, iron is the only thing that can sharpen iron. Mm. Rubber can't. Steel 
can't even sharpen iron. So you have to have those two solid foundations and you put them together and the only way they can sharpen is they rub together. Mm. So it's gonna it's a tough process. It's, it's, it's tough to grow. It, it's tough to forget about something. It's tough to get back on your feet, but you're sharpening. Mm. Just understand, you're getting stronger, right? When someone sharpens a blade for the knife to be smooth, that, that knife is going through a hard process. You gotta keep slicing it off right. for if you wanna cut it smooth. So you gotta understand, sometimes you gotta get chopped down yep. to rise back up. Mm. Mm. What would be something that you wish the world knew about you that they don't? Uh, I, I just wish the world knew that I'm a, I'm a servant at the end of the day. Uh, no matter what the media may say, no matter what my teammates may think about me, I'm willing to serve. Mm. So I, I don't care if you're uh, the, the bag lady at Publix or the, the buggy man at Publix, I'm willing to serve you. Mm. Like you like if, if, if you gotta push, push 10 buggies, I'm going to go push 12. I'm going to mm. help you out. And, and that's what I want. Awesome. I want people to know me as a servant leader. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm willing to serve at any given time. That's awesome. Awesome. You had the opportunity to to, uh, to, to work with Darren Sproles in your workout. <laughs> yes. And the reason I bring that up, because him and Gerald McCoy, Gerald was a teammate of yours in Tampa Bay, um, and encouraged you years ago to come out and with Drew. Uh, those are two guys I know that I would consider thermostats. They set the temperature in a room. And then you coming in uh, today was a pretty iconic, epic session of energy uh, with some guys I've trained for 10 plus years and then someone like yourself coming in. I do believe that you talk about servant leadership, mm. serving other people, um, that light inside of you reaches more people than you know. How do you keep that light lit? I, I, you got to stay a little kid. Like mm. we're so quick mm. to want to be an adult, nice to be uh, super mature. But that love for the game, that mm. love for your specific passion, you got to want to do that every day. Yeah. Like uh, my two year old, he's nonstop. <laughs> like you're just like, where is this energy coming from? <laughs> he's just he's not. That's how kids approach every single thing. Yep. Like we were once a kid. So that's still an inside of us. That's right. Just because we're 27 or 47, we still got that inner kid inside of him. And that's what Coach Otis, he preaches all the time. Like mm. when we're out there on the field, and yes, it's hot. Yes, it's tough. In life, yes, you're going to get knocked down. But you still got that inner kid inside of you Absolutely. to inspire you, to get you, that, get you up, that's to right. get you pumped. That's right. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy the process. And you got to remember to uh, not take yourself so seriously sometimes. Because <laughs> sometimes we're adults and we got all these responsibilities. Yeah. And it actually is nice to loosen on up. What are you most looking forward to in the future? Uh, I'm looking forward to the process. Mm. And I, I'm embracing every part of it. Uh, it's it's going to be a day by day. It's going to be marginal, marginal improvements. And when people, when you think about something that's marginal it's not just man i'm going up and i'm still going up you're gonna have some setbacks yeah but i'm gonna embrace that too yeah right but long as you keep pushing uh, I, I believe it's gonna it's gonna happen I, I believe it's we're gonna overcome this thing tell me about the saints this year coming up mm -hmm. it's uh, a new era and uh, there's great opportunity that exists yeah. What are, you, what are you hoping for? What do you prognosticate? What do you predict? Uh, it's a huge year for the New Orleans Saints organization and you, you as well. Yeah, well, I'm just grateful uh, to have the opportunity to, one, uh, get a chance to, to be the quarterback of a team, but mm. someone that I looked up. How, I, you know, I got big shoes to fill, literally. Like, I've never seen a six-foot quarterback with as big as feet as Drew. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking forward to embracing this organization and working with my teammates mm. because uh, every, every given year, our main goal is to win the Super Bowl, but I know that comes with hard work, that comes with servitude, and it comes with, with gratitude. Yeah. Do you feel in your, in your head that – You've got to fill those shoes of Drew, or you take Drew's the lessons you've learned from Drew, and be Jameis and lead the way you know how, and with, with what Drew has planted already mm -hmm. with the organization, and then go lead that team to where they need to go. Well, I have to be Jameis Winston because I because I, I literally cannot be Drew yeah. Brees. Yeah. So uh, I'm definitely going to take the lessons that he taught me and just build off those. Yeah. I mean, there's some things that that Drew does that I know, like okay, I'm not I'm not going to do that because I have to be who I am. That's right. But I would be a fool to miss the lessons and, and, and be have an ego to not take in what mm. this man has taught me uh, over the course of eight months. Mm. 
I think one thing a, a great leader does has the ability to raise everyone else's game around them. And that's something that I know you've done in Tampa Bay, you've done in New Orleans in the short time you've been there. I know Drew has done throughout his career. And um, I got to tell you, I'm excited for the Saints. I'm excited to watch you and, and the guys uh, compete again. Um, they kind of became my favorite team, even though I, I cheer for my guys. They became my favorite team, what? 2007, six, when Drew uh, went down there, and now I get to uh, continue cheering you on and the Saints on, and I'm excited for your future, man. I, I I know what you're all about, and I can't wait to see you do your thing in New Orleans. Man, Todd, I'm just I'm excited, and I'm grateful that you allow me to come in your home mm. and get a chance to work with you mm. uh, to ultimately reach that point, reach that point where you led Drew, and uh, and be be like him one day, James. This is the impact show. Impact to me is legacy. Mm -hmm. What does the word impact mean to you? And what is Jameis Winston's legacy someday going to be all about? Uh, the word impact means to me is being able to multiply what you want to leave. So I want to be a servant. I'm going to be a servant. So I want to multiply other servants. I want to multiply other disi disciples. The, the, great musicians, the Great Commission says, go and make disciples. So I want to like, I want it to be easy. Like, I want to be like Jameis. Mm. What is Jameis? Like character, honor, integrity, discipline. Mm. Those are four things that I want to be able to, to show. And, it, and, it, and it's easy. When people see, see me, they think of those things. And they just it's easy for them to do it because they've seen someone go through uh, trials. But get back up and try again. Wow. Wow. Powerful words, powerful words. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here today. Um, if there's any final words that you have, that you feel like you got something stirring in your mind, you want to speak some wisdom, life into someone that might be listening in today, any final words that you have before we wrap up today? Yeah, any, anyone. Um, again, I keep talking about gratitude because I'm grateful for you. Mm. Uh, you allowed me to come here and train with you on a busy schedule. You got the podcast going on. You got TV shows, commercials, everything, <laughs> right? In your life, you are going to have people that show up in your life and you have no idea what they're there for. Cherish every, every opportunity that you have with anyone, even if you don't know that person. Mm. That person can be an angel sent from above that you do not know. So give everybody the utmost respect. Always be kind. And just listen. If you listen, people will tell you their story. They'll tell them, they'll tell you all about themselves if you just listen and embrace who they really are mm. and not have assumptions just because of who you are. Wow. Deep. I literally was just talking yesterday with Gerald McCoy about God moments and how people show up in your life at the right time out of nowhere. Mm. It's like angelic moments come in, like, wait. Why did she or he come into my life? Next thing you know, it's the who, not the how. It's like this person is helping you attain your best level. Mm. And um, Jameis, I want to say thank you because I your heart and soul shines bright. And uh, the world needs more of Jameis Winston's light out there. So I encourage you to keep being you, uh, to keep surrounding yourself with the people you surround yourself with. And thank you for sharing your wisdom today, not only at Fitness Quest 10 and the training, but here in the podcast. Brother, I am in your corner. I can't wait to cheer you on. And uh, we've got some, some more work to do before you leave, brother. I'm going to represent for you, TD. I'm grateful for you, brother. Man, thank, thank you. you. Wow, oh, wow. You know, I, I actually feel like I've been saying that a lot lately after these interviews on the podcast. We've had some incredible guests on lately. And uh, Jameis Winston, he's a difference maker. He's a different man. You know when you're in the presence of someone where the temperature in the room just elevates? Jameis Winston is one of those men, one of those people who just elevates the temperature in the room. We call them thermostats, not thermometers, right? What was your favorite part of that episode? I'd really love to know. Because maybe you went into that episode listening and you had preconceived ideas as well of what you thought Jameis Winston was going to be like. When you talk about be humble, be hungry, does he epitomize that? Does he epitomize hunger and humility? When he talks about servanthood and constantly serving your teammates and your family and those around you, his wife and his, his two kids, just a, his newborn and how he shares about his wife had COVID in, in the last several weeks of their pregnancy, right? Folks, when you hear me talk about the words passion, purpose, and impact, Jameis Winston epitomizes that. Passion. Like, would you just get up 
for a week or two or three and move and train from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all in to get to the next level, even after a seven-year already a successful career thus far. But in so many ways, I feel like Jameis is still so green. Like when I'm t- training him in the in the weight room now and he's doing his field work and everything else, he's still green. He's so gee, he hasn't even been taught some of these things. So going into his seventh year now, there's going to be another level. The passion and desire to get better. We talk about purpose, and you heard me open up today's show about do you feel by having your first and second children, did your purpose get deeper? He said, yes, it did, but the purpose is to make sure you utilize God's gifts for your purpose. Let me ask you your purpose in life because it's something that we should contemplate every single day. I hope that every time you listen to an Impact Show episode, whether this is your first time listening in or if you've listened to 170-something episodes, like what is your purpose? Strive deep to understand your purpose. And lastly, impact. Legacy. Jameis talked about servanthood and serving others and the process of becoming better every day about the disciplines to do. And he learned that from Drew in the past year from watching a Hall of Fame, future Hall of Fame quarterback in Drew Brees and how Jameis was going to utilize those things, but he was going to be Jameis Winston and he was going to take the gifts that he's been given to go forth and to share that with the New Orleans Saints and with all of those he impacts as well. My hope is not only to make him a better quarterback, but more importantly, as he evolves as a man, as a father, as a husband, all these things, that I can impact him so he can impact millions of people. Because as I've shared before, my purpose through this show and through what we're doing is that we can impact 10 million people. Yes, that's 10 million people. But it's folks like you, it's folks like me that are sharing the show, giving back, loving it, passing it on to their family, their friends, their colleagues, their coworkers, sharing it on their, on their social media and say, that was one heck of an episode. My son, my daughter, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa has got to listen to that. Or if it's, a, if it's an athlete or a non-athlete, someone who's facing adversity or someone who's at the high of highs and Jameis has explored and, ex- and been through all of that himself, I want to say thank you because Jameis also talked about gratitude. And the importance of gratitude and starting every morning with gratitude. So as you wrap up this episode today, listening, and you wrap up your workout today, let's spend a few minutes taking some deep breaths in and some deep breaths out in pure gratitude. Because my friends, I'm grateful for you today. Thank you for listening in. And make sure that today you train hard, you eat right, you live inspired, and you always create impact.